This presentation is going to be a little bit different. Rather than offering a tip on how to use a particular software tool, I want to get your feedback on a framework that I've been thinking about that may have an impact on future software development beyond creative software. You see, I'm going to suggest that we all are, at one time or another, teachers. I'm not saying that we're all classroom teachers. Rather, I suggest that whether we formally teach students in a classroom or informally collaborate with others outside of a classroom, we all use what we know to teach, to remove barriers for the others around us, barriers of understanding, barriers of inequality, barriers of cultural participation. And when time comes to teach, despite the overwhelming diversity of dynamic, cutting-edge, interactive educational technologies available to us, I suggest that a non-zero percentage of us and our colleagues regularly rely on only two programs, Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint. A lot of people and software companies have asked, why on earth does Word and PowerPoint still prevail in education? While some would answer ubiquity and others ease of use, I suggest that the real answer is that Word and PowerPoint satisfies, a state that exists at the intersection of satisfy and either suffice or sacrifice. You see, I believe, and tell me if I'm wrong here, that most on-screen teaching content that we and our colleagues create is simply static, text-based, declarative or procedural knowledge with a handful of images thrown in for either clarification or decoration. The biggest reason why many teachers, professional or otherwise, don't use all the bells and whistles found in other programs is that they simply don't need them. Word and PowerPoint satisfies. So if we don't need all the bells and whistles, what do we teachers need? What can't we get from Word and PowerPoint? I'm going to suggest that we need three things. The first need is for an optional but integrated instructional design framework. I'm going to let you in on a secret here. Not all of us are experts in instructional design, and that lack of expertise is a barrier to many of us or to many of our colleagues. If software companies want us to use their software to create educational content, they need to show us how to do that well. They should put in an optional instructional design wizard in the software that walks us step by step through the process of designing effective instructional materials. There are hundreds of evidence-based instructional design frameworks out there. Addy, M. David Merrill's five-star instruction, Richard Clark's guided and experiential learning, full disclosure, Clark was my dissertation chair. At the end of the day, Word and PowerPoint simply do not scaffold good instructional design. We're on our own. If software companies gave us an optional wizard to help us design instructionally sound educational content, we teachers would be forever thankful. The second need is for an integrated universal design for learning framework. As our colleagues at the National Center on Universal Design for Learning are fond of saying, UDL provides a blueprint for creating instructional goals, methods, materials, and assessments that work for everyone. Not a single one-size-fits-all solution, but rather flexible approaches that can be customized and adjusted for individual needs. In other words, we need help embedded within the software to show us how to remove learning barriers for our students. Does that make sense? I'm not talking alt tags and captions here. UDL is so much more than that. But if there was software out there that combined an optional instructional design template with a mandatory template that incorporates proven universal design principles, we'd be two-thirds of the way home. Now, our third and final need is perhaps the most controversial. I'm going to suggest that we teachers need a tool that will convert our educational materials into responsive web pages, not apps. I know that a lot of companies in Silicon Valley have bet big money that app development is the next big thing for teachers. I disagree. Teachers don't need or want to convert our static text and image-based classroom presentations and handouts into apps. That's overkill. What we need instead is a way to convert our educational content into something that will display equally well on all of our student screens at once. In other words, we need help removing the display barrier. The multiple fluid grid layouts of responsive web design will let us do that. So those are the three needs I believe we teachers have for educational software. An optional but integrated instructional design framework, a mandatory universal design for learning framework, and the ability to export responsive web pages. Together, I call these three responsive learning design. You see, at the end of the day, most teachers don't need all the bells and whistles 
We don't need app development kits. What we need is software that incorporates the principles to responsive learning design. And until that happens, Word and PowerPoint will continue to satisfy us.